So where'd you get your ring from, Connor? Oh, wow, well, wouldn't you like to know? I actually got it from Denny's. <laughs> First we should get video, into it. as husband and wife. First video hey. as the Swifts. Mr. and Mrs. Swift. I still need to change my name on everything. Yeah, you better do. That is a long process. Although I will give it to you. On the phone, when people ask you your name, you do say Eleanor Swift. Yeah. Do you know what sounds weird? Ellie Swift. Saying Ellie Swift sounds feels a bit weird, so I have to say Eleanor. Eleanor. Eleanor Swift. I feel, it rolls off the tongue a bit clearer than Ellie Swift. Ellie Darby has a ring to it. Ellie her. Darby, doesn't it? But then Eleanor, Eleanor Swift. Eleanor Swift is just like the adult equivalent, I feel like. Yeah. My husband. Oh, yes, I just need to talk to my husband. Oh, hello, yeah, that's my wife. Yeah, she could talk on my behalf. Yeah, thank you. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to our channel, guys. Thank you so much, before we even get started, on all of the love and support on our wedding yes. video. It was an emotional It moment. was emotional, and I won't lie, I wasn't expecting it. Neither was I, no, guys. I've literally said from the start, I was... I'm not going to cry. I probably won't cry, so don't take it to heart. But then I knew you would. I just knew deep down. It just would. hit me. But even though I knew deep down that he would, God, this is a whole. Don't, guys, listen. Don't worry, because we. This whole video is literally going to be a story time on the wedding. Just a quick sneak peek into a part of the story time. Connor literally pulled his eyes out. If you couldn't tell from the um, other video, don't tell he everyone. literally pulled his eyes out to the point when, when I got to the aisle, and he didn't stop. And we were like having to begin the ceremony. I was literally like, Are you were right. Elves. I wasn't that bad. You were Don't quite, no, you were quite bad, Con. Oh, what? I cried I too just, much, did I? No, I was just slightly <laughs> concerned that something Elves. had gone wrong or you were gonna no. like leave me at the altar. <laughs> okay, it's officially time for the wedding story time. Who's ready? This is only the video that I wanted to unload off for about the past two years because mm. oh my god if you guys don't even know the original wedding plan oh well, there's a whole that, story time about that as well i feel like it's now or never con to be honest with you probably, do you agree probably, yeah you're probably right to be honest okay so let's make this short and snappy right the original wedding plan for those who don't know or may have recently joined basically we got engaged two years ago started planning the biggest wedding the world has ever seen, pretty much. That moment we got engaged, didn't we? We were like, let's go big. Let's invite everybody. It's going to be like a, a manor house wedding. Yeah. In the UK. In the UK, there was attached like a little village that all of our friends and family could stay at. Yeah. And then we were going to get married at the local church where the manor house is. And then there's going to be a big gazebo. Yeah. We had like two gazebo hunt. What was it? Marquee, Marquee of dreams. Sorry. Gazebo? Gazebo. Like Marking. you're under a barbecue. No, it was like a outrageous. No, it was, it was huge. With chandeliers. It was, the flowers alone were costing. Connor actually didn't even want to know that's how much they were costing. It was more than I was willing to. It was accept. just an extravagant, extravagant deal. We literally had like 200 people attending. This wedding was booked. It was literally all paid for. Like every single deposit had been paid. Everybody's mm. dates were in the diary, the invites had been sent out, and then earlier this year, we just decided... Not us anymore. It's actually not for us anymore. And it was a very sad moment. It was. It was a big moment. It took us a while to decide it as well. We were thinking about it, we were sitting on it for a couple of months. Yeah. And then we just say, look, this isn't the wedding we want. It. I think we just realised it wasn't the wedding for us. It was the wedding that we wanted everybody else to have an amazing time at. And actually that yeah. is really not what in my opinion your wedding day should be about your wedding day should be about the two of you your love story so far the people that really genuinely love and care about you and that is what's important not about like throwing the best party or though of course that is a, a really exciting and big element of it you want everybody that comes to your wedding to have an amazing time but earlier this year with only about eight months to go until our big day, we literally decided to pull the wedding. We were like, let's do something completely different. Let's get married abroad. I'm honestly gonna say, best decision I think we could ever have made. The best decision, yeah. How magical was our wedding out of 10? Perfect. Like, not one of the, any other way, you know? And I'm so glad, I'm so glad we 
pulled the original one. Yeah, had the courage to because it would have been so easy just, just to be like, on. oh, everything's booked. I know. I don't want to annoy people. I know. But we said, let's do it for us. And we got married in Ibiza. And we literally managed to pull the whole thing together in about six months worth of planning. It was stressful. Well, you found it stressful. Excuse I mean, me. I... Can you name me one piece of stress that you had in the wedding planning process? Uh, dealing with you, Eddie Darvit. Ellie Sawyer. I don't think Connor planned one part of this wedding. Whoa. Did you plan one part of it? I helped you plan. No, you didn't. You would say Connor. I think you helped me this pick style the first font dance or this song. style font. But I was already decided I just wanted to make and then, it. But, and then if I picked the wrong one, she'd be like, oh, what about this one? <laughs> okay, that one. We Googled wedding IB for wedding venues. venues and we literally had to pick from website pictures on when we we're going to get married <laughs> because <laughs> it was only six months to go until we wanted to get married. Yeah. We, we really didn't want to change our wedding. We didn't want to wait another year. Month. We booked it based on website photos and there wasn't a lot to go on because most things, as you probably know, if you're planning weddings, gets booked up years in advance. Yeah. But also at the time that we were like sending inquiries and stuff, this was like February, January, mm. February. And obviously because Ibiza is like season led, lots of the wedding venues and stuff weren't actually opening up until May. So there wasn't even like staff members that were doing the emails to respond. So it was kind of just like, a hit or miss but actually we're really really lucky the one that we really did want as our wedding venue we ended up getting it was like our number yeah. one top choice wasn't it we were really really lucky and it is incredible yeah and i can't wait to get back every year yeah it's literally it's just a place of dreams yes. but why ibiza i hear you ask mm, well let us tell you go on go on <laughs> After you, Mrs. Swift. We were exploring three different locations for our wedding abroad. We were looking at Ibiza, we were looking at Italy, and we were mm. looking at Greece. We never actually really looked at Italy and Greece, did we? No. We just were kind of like, oh, they might be nice. When we first said wedding abroad, where should we get married? I'd say it was between Ibiza or Italy. I don't even think you yeah. ever mentioned Greece to me. I had Greece in my head. Okay. But we'd never been to Greece. Exactly. And we've only really done Rome and Italy. And if it was an Italy wedding, I'd want it to be like out in the... Italian countryside. Yeah, and we haven't really explored that much, have we? No. But we have been to Ibiza. Hey. I know what people say about Ibiza, like, trust me, when we invited my grandparent, I always feel like weird calling her Grandy online because grandmother. there's people like, who's Grandy? But who's Grandy? I don't know if anybody else calls their grandma Grandy, but my Grandy. When we told my Grandy we were getting married, Ibiza, she was like, Oh, very party yeah. I was like, Grandy, no. Honestly, Ibiza is stunning. I know I know the reputation Ibiza has, you know, be for holidays with the girls, with the lads or whatever. There is like a whole separate side there's, to Ibiza. There's a different side to Ibiza. That you just don't see. Like we have friends that have been to Ibiza on multiple holidays over the years. Genuinely, on our wedding holiday, they were like, oh my God, like I've never seen mm -hmm. this stunning side to Ibiza. It's just really peaceful, really calm, incredibly beautiful. A vibe, guys. Just a wedding vibe. It just has something about it as yeah. well. Everyone's just, like you said, everyone's just on a vibe. Yeah. Everyone's just happy. Yeah. It's just that beef of vibe. Yeah. We actually went there in between the, the COVID breaks on the first year of COVID. We just loved it, to be honest. And we? didn't we, now, this may be wrong, but didn't we decide on that holiday in Ibiza we were gonna try for a child? I was just thinking that in my head. Do you know what I mean? So that's yeah. another reason why it was special because we decided, I, you know what? No, Con, that really we're does ready to start with a family. Me. We were like, we're ready for Saint to come into our We're ready for Saint. Saint Ibiza. So we booked it, we confirmed it, we literally paid the deposit without even seeing it, guys. Mm. Now I know some of you other like planner, organiser gals out there are probably staring at me in horror as I say that. But then, okay, April, May time comes around, Ibiza season is starting to open up a little mm. bit. We're like, let's go and look at the wedding venue and just keep everything crossed that we like it. So we flew out there with Sane and we also had Laura from Every Last Detail, who is mm. my fabulous friend and gorgeous wedding planner that I literally could have not planned this wedding without. We all went out on like a little group trip didn't we for like a long weekend i think it was just to scout out the area we wanted to scout out other meal venues restaurants yeah we knew that 
restaurants is the word gone. <laughs> We're kind of at this point trying to come up with a plan of like a whole wedding week or wedding weekend mm -hmm. and decide like what we wanted to do the night before or the day after. And at this point had started to like book their kind of holiday around it. So we knew how many people were coming out on which dates and yeah. So as Connor said, we wanted to go and look at a couple of the restaurants and stuff. We also wanted to meet a couple of the suppliers that we were thinking of using for flowers and decorations and stuff. And needless we to say, we fell in love with the venue. Fell in love with the venue, like you literally walk through the reception and then you're just blown away. It's the view is outrageous. Honestly, we only had been there for like a long weekend before, right guys? But when we went back for our wedding, felt like home, yeah. don't you think? I can't wait to go back next year. Me too. Oh, they know the the wedding story yeah, time. Yeah, you, you watched do. it all. Yeah, but I thought there's still so many more details. Let's go. let's maybe this is a good so, time to put okay, some questions. Okay, so Friday night. Okay, let's do some questions. So we flew out a week before the wedding. Okay, so we got married on Saturday the twentieth of August. We flew out on Saturday the 13th. Last couple of days, as you guys saw in the wedding week vlog, it was just us. We went for some lovely meals. We just had a quality time with Just same. chilled out. We it was like a chill holiday. It was like a pre-wedding honeymoon sort of thing, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, a little bit, because we're not having a honeymoon, are we? Well, undecided on the honeymoon. To be continued. Maybe that story. you guys can actually help us. If okay. you guys have little kids. little kids when you're married, well, when you're ready to go on your honeymoon. What sort of honeymoon did you go on? Because we don't, we've, we've always said safari, but now Saint is the age he's at, we're not quite sure the safari vibe. What? It'd be incredible, we but... We would love to push it until he's a little bit older so, so he, he can, can interact yeah. with it a little bit more. Anyway, that's parent problems, so let's get into that later. Then our friends and family started to arrive, so then we had a really fun couple of days making memories with them and going to different places and meals and everything like that and then first official wedding event was the night before which if you guys have watched the wedding video mm -hmm. you will have seen we went to a really stunning restaurant called canvas in ibiza they have like a private how do you describe oh, it function room yeah they have like a function room but it's not a room really it's like a gorgeous wooden structure that is separate to the main restaurant and you can hire it out for Group events buttons, yeah so we had that and we had it all dressed by the amazing decor lady that we were using. By the way, there are so many supplies and stuff that we used at the weekend that made our lives so much easier. So I'm going to leave everybody's information down in the description box below just in case any of you guys are also getting married in Ibiza and you need some help. Um, and it looked incredible because before, like before she started, it was literally just a bare room. Yeah. There was nothing in it whatsoever. Yeah. Um, and it was just a, well, we called it a white party. It wasn't really a party. It was like yeah, a basically, rehearsal dinner. If any of you guys have watched Royal House, Royal Housewives, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, you will know of Kyle's infamous. No, but I infamous. always use that word wrong. Infamous means not famous. Did you know that? No, I always it thought. Inf yeah, it does, Con. I'll do it right does. now. Infamous I'll be it right now. Means Infamous means not like, famous, hun. Oh, so it means well known for some bad quality. It means it's famous for not being good. That's not right. That's not the word I wanted to use. Uh, Kyle's famous eight. white parties where basically everybody wears white. I literally just think everybody looks so stunning in a white outfit. I thought when's my one chance in life? Because I want to do a Kyle and I want to have a stunning house in LA with a pool and ask everybody to come to our house one Friday night in August and wear a stunning white dress, but it's probably never gonna happen, mm. babe. Do you know what I mean? I thought night before our wedding, the house for dinner, me. that's my chance. And then comes the wedding day. Let's get married. What song were you singing? I thought we were gonna do Jack and Edge. Oh, go into the chapel and win. Gonna get married. So we actually woke up together. together. There were a lot of couples spend the night apart. Before, apart, but we wanted to wake up together on the morning of our wedding with our son. Yeah, so you got up and left pretty swiftly. I went for yoga with my gals. Again, go and watch the wedding video if you haven't seen it already. And I, it's not actually on the wedding video, but I actually spent the morning by myself. I went and uh, had a massage. I was a bit nervous, as you can tell. Did you? Yeah. You went and had a massage? Yeah. What, the spa? Yeah. 
Why did I not know that? I've told you, Ellie. No, you haven't. Huh? You had a nice. I think you actually kept that private because <laughs> you knew I'd be like, what? No, I had a nice relaxing massage. Oh well, lovely. And I went for a coffee, and I was reading over my speech. Remember this? Yeah, I reading remember over the my story. speech, and I started to get emotional then, guys. And this was like nine o'clock in the morning. I had breakfast on his own, guys. By myself in the corner. <laughs> There's a few adjustments I needed to make to my speech, so I did that. The boys came round. Yeah. And they actually met me for like a late. Breakfast, lunch. Got on the beer already. Had a few beers to calm my nerves again. And then we just chilled around the pool, to be honest. Um, sharing stories and having fun. Love that for you. And when we finished yoga, we literally went straight back to the... Vi so basically, even though Connor and I spent the night before together, from the moment I left the door to go to yoga, we then didn't see each other until mm -hmm. the ceremony. So um, me and my bridesmaids were getting ready in mine and Connor's villa, which is like a big two bedroom garden thing because there were so many of us, we bagged that one. And Connor went to go and get ready at one of our friends who was staying at the wedding venue as well. Their villa. Villa, their villa instead. <laughs> Hello guys, I think this might be one of the most random bits of a video mm -hmm. I have ever filmed and I've done my fair share of quick cuts and we can play the piano in one minute started like <laughs> sitting him on the piano and playing with me on there and he literally is obsessed with it i think we've got a new mozart on our hands guys but anyway you guys literally aren't gonna believe what happened in the middle of this clip when we were filming basically we filmed like a whole nother segment and then hector came in and he was wagging his tail and he got really excited and he knocked the camera off of the tripod. Camera survived, the clip didn't. So, listen, I'm sorry for saying it's literally the most distracting thing in the world right now, but this is mum life. So, I can't figure out how to use that file, basically, and we answered, like, a fair good amount of questions in there. The only other thing is... Even though the camera survived that fall, I went into Bristol today and dropped it and it didn't survive that fall. So basically, now I'm cameraless, I'm going to need to order one within the next couple of days. But um, if the quality is different here for whatever reason, it's because we're filming on the phone. Anyway, so I really wanted to get this video up, so I just thought I'm going to quickly just run through the answers of the questions that got lost. But I'm a mum at home, alone, with my toddler at the moment. So you can hear trucks and baby babble. It's just my world, babe. And do you know what? I actually wouldn't change it for any other any other thing. But actually, the truck noise, I will admit, is a bit annoying if you're not used to it. So let's turn that off. So one of the questions that we answered that got lost was, was it cheaper or more expensive doing a wedding abroad? And actually, I literally can't even explain to you guys, it's the weirdest thing. Our wedding in Ibiza worked out less than half of the price of what our original wedding in the UK was going to cost. I don't know if it's because we made the numbers much smaller for Ibiza, but... Rapid, what a good boy you are! You're very clever! Like, we literally... <laughs> made it so many less people is that you cool yeah just if you're a bride and you're like oh no because abroad would be so expensive <laughs> it's cheaper than what you think it would be i think another question was did you have to get married <laughs> legally in the uk before you got married in ibiza and the answer was yes so i just didn't put it anywhere on social media because i didn't want to confuse anybody thinking that like we'd just done this small thing in the uk as our wedding and then obviously saw the wedding pictures from ibiza and been like oh why have you got married twice i've got some really lovely pictures that i will share with you all eventually of that day it was a lovely lovely day we um just spent it with all of our close friends and family and we spent it with a lot of people who weren't able to make it to ibiza and because of that we wanted it to feel like as much of a wedding celebration as possible so even though we didn't do the things like cut the cake or speeches or fast dances or anything like that because we wanted all of that emphasis to stay in Ibiza, we... Can you do this? Um, I did like wear a wedding dress not the wedding dress that I wore in Ibiza but just still a really nice wedding dress Um, and Connor Connor wore like a really lovely suit yeah, well, and everybody dressed up and we got legally married. Whoa, 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 whoa. Is 
how you do it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's how you do it. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. And then the final question that got cut off. I won't keep you here in this environment in the playroom for too long. The question was, what were the songs that you had for the wedding? So we walked down the aisle. Well, me and my bridesmaids walked down the aisle to Turning Page, which was stunning. I don't know if you guys could gather from the wedding video, but we had a really amazing band. It consisted of a singer, percussionist, pianist, drums, sax player. Oh my God, it was literally amazing. And... They did like live renditions of all of our music. So we had Turning Page for us to walk down the aisle to and they like did kind of improvisation on it. So it was like playing really nicely when all my bridesmaids walked down the aisle. But when I walked down the aisle, there was like a crescendo and a key change and it was amazing. When Connor and I had actually just got married and we were walking back down the aisle the other way, we walked down the aisle to This Will Be An Everlasting Love. Again, oh my God, guys literally incredible felt as if we were living the credit scene of our very own rom-com film like that moment potentially one of the happiest moments of my whole life like just married the love of your life walking back down the aisle with everyone throwing confetti at you like this will be an everlasting love this will be and then we saw you and then our first dance song was Can't Help Falling In Love With You by Elvis, which was a really, really nice song. Oh, our entrance song as bride and groom for like to the dinner bit was Celebration. Celebrate good times, come on. Yeah, and that was a vibe. I really feel like music is a very important part of the day. Like put a lot of time and effort into your choices of your songs because it really does set the tone i'm gonna love you and leave you guys the next part of the video is um me actually on my own as we were before talking through a bit more of like the actual planning part of the wedding i did a lot of that myself without connor so see you guys there <laughs> back to mum life for me okay so i just thought to finish off we could just do a little bit of the nitty gritty you and me miss planning weddings extraordinary over here i know some brides might really really want their like husband to be as part of the planning process but for me just in terms of our relationship i'm the planner i'm the organizer i really had my vision with how i wanted our wedding to be and connor is just as you guys know very laid back a really chilled out guy so he kind of did just give me free reign because he trusts me in my vision i really enjoyed planning the wedding i was getting quite stressed at the start about the idea of planning a wedding abroad just because i feel like really easy to find suppliers and everything here in the uk and i was wondering about the logistics of how planning an abroad wedding would work like would we use uk suppliers and then get everything shipped out to ibiza or do we try and find suppliers in ibiza and honestly my top bits of advice for planning a wedding abroad would really be to find your connection kind of like a wedding not necessarily a wedding planner because i know that everybody has different budgets and on top of a wedding a wedding planner can be really expensive but almost just like someone that can coordinate the day for you whether it's a person at the wedding venue a lot of wedding venues you do get kind of like a coordinator to help with running the day and making sure that everything is run really smoothly because the last thing you want on your wedding day is for like all the problems to be coming to you i was really really lucky and as i've said before one of my best friends laura at every last detail kind of acted as that like wedding coordinator for me the day there were like issues that i didn't even know about until days after the wedding because she was like oh yeah this happened and then this had to be sorted out and i was like oh my god what i didn't even know and honestly it really makes a difference on your wedding day you just want drama free life hun you just want to relax so yeah i would really really advise getting that kind of one person to connect all the dots for you so some form of wedding coordinator or someone else that really was handy to us was a concierge company out in ibiza that we used called faith ibiza now obviously faith is kind of only exclusive to ibiza but i'm sure kind of every destination you go to there is a really good concierge that has probably done some form of wedding or has some sort of contact from parties or events and we found the majority of our suppliers through the concierge team so literally the dj the band even the the decor and the flowers and everything they were all recommended through faith what was the schedule of the day did you have a late wedding into the night 
this was something that I was slightly worried about just because I really didn't want our wedding to feel like it was just really, really short lived. So we didn't have our ceremony until six o'clock in the evening, which if you compare to every wedding I've been to, it's always been at like one o'clock in the afternoon, two o'clock in the afternoon, maybe. So you kind of feel as though you have the whole afternoon, the whole evening, and then obviously into the early hours of the morning. I was really, really worried that doing it at six o'clock would just feel like too late in the day. I was worried that like at 10 o'clock I'd wanna <laughs> call it quits because I know what I'm like, like 10 o'clock's my bedtime, babe. Do you know what I mean? And you got married four hours ago, but I wanna go to sleep. There's a reason why wedding coordinators and wedding planners suggest for you to get married that late in the evening because it just means that the heat is bearable. Do you know what's actually one thing that is only just striking me now? I literally was not even bothered by the heat. Like I had a few questions on my stories that were like, do you not find it really, really hot in your dress? How did your makeup not melt off, blah, blah, blah. I literally can't even remember even being phased by the heat. I literally can't remember. I know that the boys were getting quite sweaty, but all had like handheld fans and because it was later on in the evening, it just meant that everything was a bit cooler. And yeah, I just felt really comfortable. I didn't feel too hot at all. Things that were worth it, including the price and effort, and things that you wouldn't do again. Things that were worth it for me was definitely the flowers. I feel like flowers is a topic that everybody loves to kind of complain about and say the next day, oh my God, the flowers weren't worth it, blah, blah, blah. For me, the flowers were everything, guys. Like, I have never seen a more beautiful bunch of flowers than my own wedding bouquet or my bridesmaids bouquets. I was obsessed with the vibe of our wedding and i just feel like it could not have been achieved without the flowers so i definitely think the flowers were worth the money and the effort i also think finding a really good celebrant to marry you is amazing we literally had the most incredible guy who we spent a lot of time going back and forth on phone calls and catch-ups with prior to the wedding he literally formed this like really individual really special wording for the ceremony and it included like stories from our friends and he brought out like shots for everybody for the ceremony and he incorporated his words with like the singers and stuff and it was just amazing so i would really say a really cool celebrant is definitely worth it i don't really feel like that is much i wouldn't do again honestly the thing for me about the whole wedding i don't regret and i wasn't expecting to say that i really thought that was going to be one thing that i would be like well, it's probably a bit too much money for that but did you write your own vows so this was kind of like a half and half we didn't just want like really plain and simple till death do us part that's it kind of thing we really wanted it to be a bit more personal than that but at the same time connor had literally poured so much like effort and emotion into his speech that he was going to be doing that both of us didn't really want to feel as if it was just like a repeat of the vows so we decided that we wanted to create our own vows but our celebrant helped us write them he gave us loads of inspiration from like different religions and different types of ceremonies and the three of us together kind of formulated this like really beautiful passage of words that genuinely could not have been truer to connor and i and our relationship and the promises that we wanted to make to each other if you guys have watched the wedding video, you will have heard our vows. We kind of did like promises and then pledges where we both say we do and it was just amazing. Okay guys, I feel like that is finally it. I don't feel like there is much more info that I have to share with you all about the wedding. It feels really good to finally be like caught up with each other about it because this has been something I have been so excited to share with you all for so long. I can't believe it's happened. I can't believe I'm literally a wife. And once again, I'm just so, so thankful for all of you for being a part of this journey and watching our wedding video and just being honestly so sweet and so kind. I couldn't ask for a better bunch of people to call my friends over here on the internet. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I love you all so much. I am really, really excited for the content that we have coming up. It is now September. So our favourite time of the year is finally here, everybody. The autumn content commence. I cannot wait. I love and appreciate every single one of you so much. Thank you so much for being a part of this journey with us, guys. And I will see you in the next video.